Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Veltima Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. I am down at the Pride Seed Education Center today, catching up with Pride agronomist Matt Chapel. Matt, how's it going? It's going well, Bern. I I found you there. You're over there. And now, now normally I, I couldn't find you in a cornfield, but it's a little different story this year, Matt. Um, a lot of stress, a lot of you know short corn. You know, uh, typically we talk about how big corn hybrids have gotten. Yeah. This year. A little different story. That's right. We've totally taken out what we've known about modern hybrids and competitiveness in the field, and we're taking a little step back this year and having a different angle on our on our crop. Yeah. So what's going on here? I mean, like, you know, we see hybrids that are typically nine and ten feet coming in at you know six and seven feet. Here, this is a perfect example. That's right. Yeah, we're looking at the tip of a tassel right at eye level, yeah. Burn. It's uh, it can often be disheartening, right, when you get out there and look at that and. I, a lot of conversations of why is my corn so short, I've never seen that hybrid so short. And when you really stop and think about it, we came out of a very challenging spring. Uh, we actually had some good planting conditions early where the crop got planted and emerged within five to seven days from that early planting window. But that corn crop grew so fast and so rapidly it quickly transitioned its life cycle from living off its reserves in the radical root to trying to throw down nodal roots. Yeah. So what happens now, Matt? I mean, like, you know, we, we typically, you know, corn grows through the vegetative stage. We get this big tall plant and then it starts to turn to that grain fill series, uh, period. What happened here that uh, this stuff stopped at six feet? Yeah, so that V3 to V4 growth stage when they was putting down a lot of nodal roots, it started to find some restriction, maybe some tillage layers, maybe some compaction from last fall burn, and we started to see that wave, that variability in the crop. And then the crop goes into defense mode burn. When it's in defense mode, it's not really worried about growing to its maximum vegetative potential, okay? It's roped up, maybe even looking a little gray, and it slows down the whole factory. When you slow down the whole factory, there's no need for that plant to try to worry about competing with its neighbor when we talk about populations of 34, 32,000. So really we've stunted it a little bit, right? We've tightened up the inner nodes. And when you tighten up the inner nodes with tight whirls and tight roped up plants, well, we get more sunlight penetration. More sunlight penetration, really we're not maximizing our, our photosynthetic potential. We're not maximizing our radiation from the, from the sunlight and that plant just basically stalls out and tightens up its inner nodes. Yeah. So what, what do we have left here, Matt? And I asked the question, you know, I mean, typically, you know, are we still dependent on how your corn sort of moved through pollination? Whether you had good weather, some moisture at pollination and at silking, you know, we may have short plants, but do we still have yield potential? That's right. Plant height is not indicative of our full yield potential. It's not necessarily that short corn means that you're going to have a crop failure. Um, we are definitely relying on good grain fill periods. We are relying on adequate moisture at pollination time so we get that tip fill and minimize our tip back. Of course there's maybe some of that going on in the crop as well but for the most part burn there is some very good kernel counts on some six foot tall corn out there. Some, some kernel counts that will get us to at least an average crop. So Matt, here we are, we've got some short corn. I mean, what does this mean for the rest of the season now? As you know, as you say, as through grain fill and, and running the combine through a crop like this. Yeah, a good thing about short corn is that compact structure. It should be good standability going into fall, right? We'll weather some storms maybe, hold up a little longer. More than likely, we've got a tough, hardy plant, tough stalks with some good lignin production in them. So I think that, that we have that going in our favor. Mm -hmm. Final question for you, and that is, hey, what can we learn from this? And I'm looking around this, your site here, and you've got this uh, hybrid in corn on corn, and here we are. And just across the way here, we've got the same hybrid in a nice rotated ground, soybeans, you've got some weed in there probably. You know, a, a, a totally different soil, it's about two feet tall. That's right. Same fertility as well, Burn. So it really speaks, you know, true to needing a crop rotation, managing residue, and most importantly, good soil health. Mm. I think if we can give the 
crop a great early start with good soil health, we can weather the storm, we can reduce our number of days under stress or under defense, and we can maximize our yield potential in spite of moisture. Awesome. Well, hey, terrific insights, Matt. Always great to have you on the Corn School. Thanks, Bern. And I can see you this year.